want people to, to praise you the way you are dealing with your wife. You are looking for the praise of people. Praise of men. And by so doing, you are moved away from yourself. You don't want to lose certain friend. And this friend is not helping you. You want you to move away from yourself. The biggest mistake you can make in this life is not to lose people, but to lose yourself. If you lose yourself, you have no value before God. You have no value before God. You have to maintain yourself. You have to keep yourself. I know this is who I am. And this is what I am called to do. This is what I like. But others, when you see women have come with this style, you want to follow them. Mm -hmm. When you see men have started this style, you want to follow them. See, I don't want to be the out, old one out. I don't want to be old one out. <laughs> I don't want to be outdated. I want to look like I am up to date. When they start these things, you also start. Mm -hmm. They challenge you, they say, man, ah, you are behaving like a boy. Grow up. Big men do like this. Mm -hmm. Big men do like this. Big girls do like this. And now you start to be, want to, to prove that you are a big man. Yeah, you start now to do things that make you lose your own identity. value. Yeah. Your own identity. Who are you? And that's the question you must answer. Who are you? Who are you? That question you must answer. The sons, seven sons of priests, Sekaf, they were not able to answer demon. Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? That question you must answer in every area of life. In marriage, you are waiting for forces. Forces of marriage, they will ask you, who are you? Anywhere you go, whether you go in business, business class will ask you, who are you? When you go in ministry, you write to city, they ask you, who are you? And you must answer that question. There are some cities you will visit, <laughs> they will tell you, young man, slow down. This city has its owners. And you have to show them what you are made of. And if you don't, and why you are there. And why you are there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish somebody is hearing me that. Oh my so you need to walk with that boldness as a woman and say, God knew why he gave me this man. I am fit for this man. I maintain your identity. Don't die to impress people. Don't die. You don't you want if you don't know how to do some things, don't do them. Mm -hmm. Don't do them. Yeah. Do what you know. Maintain your identity. Maintain your identity. There's couples who are fighting. Because both of them don't know how to dance. But uh, the other couple, when they see them play music, how they are dancing, you, you want to pretend to do that. And you fight. Somebody told me dancing is walking. So if you know how to walk, you know how to dance. That's why we have different dancing styles, because we have different walking styles. <laughs> so there are so many things that are making you. You are unique. You see people with the dozens of children. Dozens. They have 12 sons. And you say, ah, us, we must have this. They are unique in that way. Leave them Having alone. to leave them alone. <laughs> when you compete with them, you may die on the way. Live your life. Live your life. <laughs> if you are comfortable with the two, it's okay. There's somebody who wants to name the whole clan because they have that grace. They have their own unique. Even if they say, I want one, the last one, they get three. Yeah, like the, the, and they get the three. And then you, you hear that. Now instead of the, the five that they said, they have now eight. Because the number was increased. More than they expected. So, I want to tell you that you are unique. Amen. As a man, you are unique. Maintain your identity. And it's a price you pay. Most people are not themselves. They lost their identity. Long time ago. You are an imitator of people. And if you become an imitator of Mwenda, the best you can become is Mwenda number two. You can never be Mwenda number one. You can never be more than original. Mm -mm. You can only be number two. And when number one comes, number two must keep quiet. Jesus said when the complete comes, the incomplete yeah. shall be moved away. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> be yourself. And this is the time you can be happy. I, never, I have never seen myself lost in where I have gone. In the world. We are moved with that many places. And we have never got lost. Mm -hmm. We have our own uniqueness. 
We go to white, we don't feel black. In fact, they come to us and say, you look nice, you're wonderful. And they, they want photos with us. <laughs> Our own uniqueness. Yeah. I am the way I am. You are the way you are. Maintain thyself. Don't lose your title. Don't lose your identity. Because that is where your reward is. Following other people. Maintain your uniqueness. And this is where the many couples now. When you, you transformed into what your husband never knew. Into the man that... Into the woman that you are, your husband did not marry. Into the man that your wife did not marry. Because... You want to imitate. Some people even are not comfortable the way they talk. They want even to imitate others while they talk. And you know you are given a unique voice. When you talk, everybody knows it is you. Because you are unique. So when you begin to imitate, you produce something that is not required. Something mm. that is not imitated. Photocopy. Yeah, it's not needed. Now, the, the, the problem of photocopy is this, my dear. Mm -hmm. We may have uh, in this world uh, one Apostle Mwenda original and we may have hundred photocopies. So when God wants to eliminate the world and reduce or retrench, he will not go to the original. He will go to the photocopies because they don't have much work. Yeah. And he will maintain the original. So that is the, the advantage of remaining yourself. In your course. Because you, when you remain in your course, you are only effective when you are yourself. You are only effective when you have maintained your identity. You are only effective to that man you married called husband. Effective to that woman you married and called wife when you are yourself. You are useful and effective to God when you are yourself. And but when you miss that, that's when God was empowering just one stone mm. because David is given the uh, the, uh, the 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 comments by King Saul. Mm. He refuses to use them because he was not used, mm -hmm. and he never went for the spear. He never went for anything else. He had no sword, but because he was in on his course, mm. God empowers that stone. Mm. So whatever a couple does when they are on the course, God empowers it. Yeah. You only bless others when you are yourself. You only bless others when you are yourself. Once you become something else, you grieve others. Have you ever seen a person who does not want to see people in posters who make themselves what they are not? They don't want. When you be yourself, you become a blessing. Praise because they need you. They need that uniqueness, mm -hmm. that character. Everyone is important. In a building like this, where houses where we are now, or any other building we see, there are some people who do very little work, but it's needed. It's their work, they must appear at that time. Yeah. You will never see a, a man coming to roof when people are laying foundation at the BC, putting <laughs> a, a foundation down, he is coming with the iron sheets, want to trying roof. to roof. He has nothing to roof. Until they finish, they do that, then he comes. And when they do that, they say, hey, the roof has come out so nicely. Then the other feet things come. Mm -hmm. That's how things are done. There is a couple that is supposed to be a roof. So when you walk together, God sees the roof. Hey, look at that roof. Praise the Lord. But when you made yourself war, a stone that is hidden and you are supposed to be a roof, can you imagine a roof that is underground? Things will not be nice. So you are supposed to maintain what you are supposed to be. You are unique. Don't worry. Some people are in a lot of worries and anxiety because they want to be like others. Mm. You want to be like so and so. You want to be like so and so. You want to be like so and so. Look at your brother. Your brother has done this. Look at the, the, what they have done. Look at what they have. Let them do. That is what makes them happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many people who don't drive happiness from the things that you see bringing happiness to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some men, when you buy a car, that's everything. There are some men, even if you come with anything, they don't feel like anything. The car is nothing to them. So why can't you be yourself? Some have done a lot of things. 
walking naked, half naked, going to the gym, reducing yourself, plastic surgery. Look, try to look like others. Be yourself. Be yourself. That's why you are seeing mothers hold. They are trying to be like girls, trying to fit in, and they are stressed. They want to be called young and sexy, and you disturb yourself for things that you're not supposed to disturb yourself. You're unique. Every age has its own uniqueness. Little girls, they have their own uniqueness. A little baby, when you grow, as you grow, you manifest different things and you show every different stage. Every yeah. stage. Yeah. So, every stage, we need to see you fitting that stage and being happy. Others are disturbing themselves so much. So much. Trying to do everything that others are done. They are taking their they are children to the school. They have done this. They have done. You are un your children are also unique. Lord. They are not even supposed to be like you. They are supposed to be better than you are. Mm. They are supposed to be improvement of your life. So you are not supposed to put your children under stress. Because you want to look, to look like somebody else's children. Let them live their own life. One thing we were talking with our children another time they tell us, <laughs> we love you and we love you for one thing. Number one, you never let us to go astray. Mm. You teach us the right way. Number two, you have not made us slaves. Yeah. We have freedom. We can say this is wrong and you, you can see it. And we listen. can we, and <laughs> listen to us. Mm. We can say this and you listen and you can give us what we want. That one we see is different. And now we are not under pressure. You don't put us under any pressure. We enjoy life. So we enjoy you being our parents. There are some, some children under pressure. Every time you are telling them, look at so and so, look at so and so, look at so and so. <laughs> They are unique. They are unique. Yeah. And they have a unique life. You need to understand that you are also unique. The man you married is unique. Mm -hmm. The wife you married she is unique. Yeah. Don't turn her into something else. Don't allow your wife to lose her okay. identity. Let her remain real. Let your husband maintain his identity. And that's a price you have to pay. Anytime I keep checking myself because I can easily, easily deviate from the truth. Yeah. I keep on summoning myself. I say, oh, I should not look at the styles in the world and the things that are happening in the world. And then finally I'm assimilated and I lose my value. I keep checking. Am I maintaining the course why I am here in the world? In ministry, am I maintaining the uniqueness of my ministry? Mm -hmm. Am I maintaining what I am going to do and I keep on checking the vision. Am I in the vision? And I am not much worried by losing people like I'm worried by losing God. Amen. Losing myself is also another issue. So I maintain that and I want you to maintain yourself also. Mm -hmm. I maintain my marriage as your marriage. My marriage is different from yours. My wife is different. That's why she's called Florida. Different mm -hmm. than, you are your, than your wife. She is what she is. And your wife is what she is. She is. Yeah. Maintain that. Maintain that. Don't compare. There is no comparison here. You need to understand that. And this is killing many marriages. Mm -hmm. Keep on comparing. Keep on comparing. So and so on. And three children and she did not complain. You are complaining because of one. That one. Maybe the grace needed to be different. Each one of us. According to the measure of grace, this is what we are. You cannot turn somebody to be what they are not and be, expect them to be happy. And even you, you will not enjoy mm. the results. <clears throat> Maintain the purpose. Have you ever seen a role turned into a tax? When you see a lorry, a driver of a trailer waiting for one person to take it somewhere there, that's even turning is a problem. <laughs> that's a misuse. So some men and women are like lorries, trucks mm. being used in marriage like taxis, which is wrong. You have eliminated, reduced your wife who is a machinery. She can think and think and think and do it. You want her to maintain that level. Huh? 
Because somebody, his wife went out and became unfaithful. You have made your wife a slave. Yeah. You don't want your wife to go out mm, to, and to work, do to do something. So you, many women these days, many women these days, when they get money, they are becoming disobedient. And they cannot obey. I, have told, I was told by somebody, even when women be, uh, go to school, they get degrees. There are some people who brought them vichwangumu. They can't submit. They have hardened their hearts. I want to tell you, they are wise women. Yeah. They are women uh, who are called professors. They are they PhDs are. and still they value marriage. Mm. They understand what to do. It's not about education. It's about perversion. Moving from who you are supposed to be mm. in different areas. Mm. I was in university and I like some lecturers. There's a lady who used to challenge us a lot. And especially young ladies. Tell the young ladies, look at me. She and what many people were admiring. I said, when I go home, I am a wife. And that's why I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you get some, just one degree. You can't do a thing of wife. And that is why they are frustrated. Look at them. And they go to work frustrated. Some have turned into drugs. That's why some educated women are more drunkards than even men today. Because they are looking for comfort, looking for joy. But they're not getting it. Way, yeah. it. Looking for love, a position from wrong places. Mm. You need to change. In Jesus name. You need to change and understand. Amen, amen. The value that I was given by God, if I maintain it, I am the best. I am the best. Mm -hmm. I am the best when I am myself. Couple, maintain your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And that's a price you pay. Because there are so many who want to change you to make them, to make you like them. Mm -hmm. When we train people, we don't tell them to be like us. We tell them to be themselves. To go to their place. To find yeah. themselves mm. and do. Amen. Because we are unique and they are also unique. unique. Mm -hmm. We help you to identify yourself and do what you are supposed to do. May God help you Amen. to maintain your uniqueness as a couple. Amen. And then number four, the price you have to pay. Mm. And I believe... God is helping you. Number one, we said, maintain your spirituality. Number two, maintain your divine positioning. Number three, we have said, maintain your identity. And I want to add this before I leave this. Thank you, I started this listing them point to point. When you lose your character, you have lost your identity. Yeah. It is your character that defines you. Your character is who you are at all time. So when you begin getting characters, some habits, you cannot say character, you get habits. Then habit becomes, when you practice them, they become character. And when you practice character, character becomes nature. So there are some things you borrow, some characters. You, you copy what people are doing. You change. There are some people who aren't their nature, their blood in their DNA, they don't know how to cheat. But they have walked with corrupt individuals. And they have believed that is the way of life. They've been corrupted. And they have been corrupted. And they have begun also to cheat. And they are guilty. Original cheaters don't have any conscience. <laughs> they don't even <laughs> they don't even yeah. feel they have done it because it's their lifestyle. Their conscience, their is, conscience dead. is dead. Yeah. But there are those who are guilty. They are making you live their lives. Turn away. Become yourself. Amen. Become yourself. Don't, don't allow your character mm -hmm. to be taken away. Don't allow ungodliness to fade. You have to fight. You have to fight. And this is the value you pay. This is things you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you don't follow things that others are doing. Hard times will come. But you are not supposed to me move away from who you are supposed to be. Maintain your character. Integrity is everything. This is who I am. That's what, what you, you are supposed to be. And let people know what you live for. Let them know why you are there and what you live for. Don't be fake. Never allow people around you to struggle to define you. Let them know you obvious and they know you are stand. And they know who you are. 
so that they understand what they can involve you and what they cannot involve you. Some people know me, they know what they cannot involve me. They know what they can never call me. When they want to, to do some things, they can't call me because they know I will not support it. Have a start. Now, could it be the problem because there are people who are married, they are, they are men, they don't reveal their identity, nobody knows. So when they go, especially where they are not known, mm. there is a problem. There are some ladies, they are married, but it is very hard Difficult to know. To know where they are. Married. Marriage is not supposed <clears throat> to be hidden. When you marry, that's why you marry in public. You not marry in private. <laughs> if you marry in private, make it public. You are supposed to be. That's why you have the ring. This answers question. Those who remove. Those who remove, they are unfaithful. Yeah. Unfaithfulness is in the heart. They have lost their character. This must be remaining. Don't say you are allergic. <laughs> you need to pray until that allergy dies because that allergy is forcing you to be something else. I have seen men who say I'm allergic. We should pray for them and the allergy dies. Because allergy that is making you to remove the, the sign of your fidelity is, is bad. You mean you need to have your wedding ring with you always, wherever you go. Always where you go. Where you go, you need to have it. And this is divine when people meet you. And those who are confused, you put the rings, all the fingers. You're confusing people. They don't know if you are engaged, you are separated, you are married. Because every finger has its own meaning. And they define it in their own way. So the marriage ring is known to be marriage ring and the finger is known and you put that finger the ring when people are seeing so if you lost it get it and put it on every time and speak introduce yourself always as a married person don't don't hide yourself and say i'm i am a postmender a servant of the living god amen hey let the people know if i'm married or not even if they are seeing ring and my wife so there are some people who don't do that. Identify yourself with your marriage, with your spouse. That's why you are ring, those who have the rings, and they are written names, they are written the name of your spouse. Mm -hmm. Identify yourself, and that is something you need to do. And that is how you need to stand and be counted, because they know who you are and how they, 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 they look at you is how you introduce yourself. A lot of couples who use the, they identify themselves with, the, with their children. If you decide to identify yourself with your children, identify yourself with all children. <laughs> Not one, because you will bring competition Baba Junior. Among, among the children. Okay. Baba Junior, Baba Who. Uh -uh. If you want to identify yourself with a child, identify yourself with all the children. If you agree, say I am Mama X, Y, I'm a Z. You can call me anything you want there. If you want. I am Baba, so and so. And your children should know that. If every time you start to say, I am Baba, this. Baba, this. For example, here I have four children. And all of them, they are, they are my sons and daughter. If I call, I say, I am Mama Dixon. Dorcas, Nason, and Wilfred. We'll ask what about us. When do you fall? When you fall. So don't entertain people to call you Baba so and so, Mama so and so. And if they call you, don't call yourself. Because there's people that you cannot teach them. Yeah. Don't call yourself before your children. Tell them I am Baba so and so. And I'm this and this. I am father to this, father to this. Father to this. Then you are all the, the, the children be there. If you have only one child, it's okay. Identify yourself with that child. But if you have many, don't. Because that identity is also good. And remember as fathers, you give identity to your children. You are the source. You cannot afford to misbehave. You give identity. You are the source. You are the foundation. They should not struggle to have identity. A son of a nobody is a nobody. So you need to rise up and begin to make the name for the children because they imitate <clears> you and they will live life according to the standards you have set. Encourage them to manifest and become themselves. You only manifest in your identity 
You cannot manifest away from yourself. I pray that God will help you to be yourself. And every couple, celebrate your uniqueness. Mm. I say again, celebrate your uniqueness. And that is what will make you happy. When you celebrate, appreciate who you are. There are people who have suffered from self-rejection because they don't appreciate who they are. Appreciate. If you are short, appreciate. You are short and you don't wish you are, lo you, you are taller than you are. Don't wish that you are something else. Appreciate what you are and thank God for who you are. Appreciate, even if you are short, you are married to a very tall man, if you chose the tall man and the tall man chose you, appreciate. As short as you are, you are good and you are nice. As tall as you are, you are good and nice. Understand that. And God is going uh, to bless us in Jesus' name. Another thing now, number four, if I'm right, number four, the price you need to pay, number four, you need to pay the price of getting knowledge. Price of getting knowledge is a price that you have to pay every individual, every couple. That is a price you pay. Living in ignorance is very expensive. It's very expensive. You lose a lot. You need to have knowledge. You have to get knowledge. You have to get understanding. You have to do your best to make sure that you are having that understanding. Knowledge is supposed to get it. Ignorance will make you not live great life. So many couples are living in ignorance because they are not ready to pay for knowledge. What we are doing here and the reason why we are here right now at this time is to give you knowledge. And there are some people who are not ready to pay this price. You are not ready uh, to, to pay the price of getting knowledge. And when you don't have that willingness, mm -hmm. you lose a lot. Now, we say this, and this is very good. We say in the foundation, one of the pillars in the foundation of a happy family is knowledge. It's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. These are very key uh, pillar. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, when you move to that level of becoming a person who has understanding, the person who has knowledge, then you are able to move into that happiness. And you have to pay every price needed to know how to operate in marriage, what you need in marriage, what you need to be effective. And this is what is lacking. I said this, and I've been saying this as my testimony in this uh, pro, uh, program, that I feared a lot to get married. I feared. Because I saw marriages are breaking. And men and women of God are getting broken. Even I never knew I would be in ministry. But I feared. I feared. And the reason why I was praying even to get a good wife is so that when she will become a problem to me, I will report her to God. That's, what, that's the only excuse I had. I never had any knowledge. But God told me, it's not a must that your marriage have a problem. Say, what do you mean? Say, they have problems because they don't have knowledge. The people of God perish because they lack what? Knowledge. They have gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. So you need it. You need that knowledge.